Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton for ID People. I'm here at ID World in Rio de Janeiro and I'm joined by Peter Chung. Peter, thanks very much for stopping by. Start by telling me a little bit about what your company does and what you are presenting here. Okay, um, I think thank you for this invitation. Uh, I'm glad to at least uh, explain to you what we do best. Uh, the nature of our business is that we do manufacturing and design of authentication and identification devices, mainly on biometrics, on uh, you know, on mostly on border control, you know, applications. Today's presentation will be touching more on mobility in biometrics. All right, so we're talking about many countries today. Uh, in the last couple of days, I've attended for the for the conference. Mm. Uh, the countries like India, like Brazil, uh, like in, even in Nigeria, they are implementing on enrollment of national ID. Mm -hmm. And in the national ID, as you probably can see, that uh, they are issuing out e-IDs that has got many applications in it. So the use of e national e-ID now has gone beyond just identification, but it's also for banking, for uh, driving license, and for healthcare, and so on. Mm. So because of the nature of the multiple applications of EID today, all right, uh, there will be more uh, requirements to use mobile biometrics devices to authenticate uh, such applications. Okay. All right? okay. Let's say for example in healthcare, for example, mm. right, uh, there will be a lot of readers uh, will be deployed, biometrics readers, right? they will be deployed uh, in the hospitals, for example, or pharmaceutical uh, areas where to authenticate uh, citizens who are entitled for subsidies or medicine, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, prescriptions. So they will use uh, the national ID uh, authenticate with our devices, uh, mm. you know, in remote areas, uh, not only in hospital, in uh, larger uh, satellite cities, but also in remote villages and so on. Okay. Right. Okay. And the countries you mentioned are quite quite a few of those are very high population yes. developing countries. Yes. I guess what they need is robust. They need low cost. They yes. need something that's very scalable. Yes. Is that is that a, a huge demand? Yes. Um, that's where you can see that uh, the the growth of these devices on biometrics has uh, grown exponentially. Uh, we are talking about a Kega growth of almost forty eight percent in the world. All right. Uh, that's pretty much uh, that's the, huge. the kind of adoption of biometrics mm. devices in the world today, and, and that is why uh, we see an opportunity, mm. uh, and we start having to offer solutions and devices to, uh, made to uh, to the market today. You know? yeah. and especially that, uh, as I said, you know, many countries are issuing EIDs today, electric yeah. EIDs. More so, you will need more devices then. Yeah. Right? I mean, take example like in, in India, they have registered, uh, enrolled 300 or 360 million of uh, citizens. Yeah. Can you imagine the impact of 360 million citizens uh, having an EID today, transacting uh, banks, uh, mm. you know, uh, you know, uh, ATMs in ATMs in banks in in, in multiple sites, you know, and in needing a biometric. Yeah, they would need a yeah they would need a mobile biometric devices right, yeah. uh, to be used because, as you know, um, in India is a very large uh, geographical area, mm. so it's very large distributed and uh, infrastructure wise, there's three G available, GPRS available. Yeah. So mobile devices that can authenticate biometrics becomes. Uh, uh, a, a very critical part of the infrastructure to support these uh, needs and wants of the uh, EID yeah. requirements. Yeah. yeah, and in terms of the data there, that's all cloud storage? Or uh, I, I think when it comes to the data, it will be dependent on the country implementation because of the security. So mm -hmm. some of them would use uh, the public cloud uh, uh, infrastructure, some we use a dedicated uh, back to the server, yeah, data to the service. gateway server before it gets into the other, to the cloud. To yeah, the, to the cloud yeah, computer. So it, can be so it all depends, all right? Yeah. Uh, because it involves a national ID identification, it involves uh, some security information. For yeah. example, like the biometrics information is stored in the card itself. So again, uh, <coughs> there's also a concern about security on mobility, mm. having to transfer or sending your biometric information via wireless or through GPRS yeah. or 3G. Uh, but with PKI, uh, you know, uh, in place with a, you know, a symmetri symmetrical uh, 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 biocryptic technology yeah. that's available today, uh, that will prevent uh, security breach of, yeah. uh, you know, transferring biometric data across the, the network. Yeah, well, it's uh, a constant balance, isn't it, between yes. uh, between convenience and security, and we have to yes. constantly work on it. So, some very very large pro um, projects that you're, that you're dealing with. Yes. How does that work for you in terms of scalability in terms of your business? Um, I, I guess uh, in, in terms of scalability, uh, I, what what we see is that. Uh, there are many changes in the adoption. I think we talk about 
uh, desktop readers of uh, biometrics desktop readers in house. I mean, in offices, uh, in buildings, right? Which is mostly desk bound kind of readers. And then it started to move into uh, uh, handhelds, uh, dedicated handhelds for biometrics. And then now, even like as you probably can see, that Apple has just launched their own phones that has got a biometric capability as well. Yeah. So it has gone to the mainstream where we, we personally feel that uh, the acceptance of using biometrics as a means of authentication would be, uh, would be very pervasive. And uh, people are more receptive <coughs> of using biometrics as a, you know, as a, as, as a use as, as a use for you know uh, for uh, secure transaction yeah all right yeah and moreover um, we all know that including yourself all right you will probably be aware that you know you, you need to remember like more than 10 passwords yeah. for your notebook for yeah, your handphone yeah. for your bank account so there's just too many passwords that we need to yeah. remember so on the average there was a study made that on the average around the world people have to remember um, an average of eight passwords for every individual on this earth that's too many. That's, isn't it? Yeah, that's on the average uh, yeah. statistics. They would say eight passwords to remember. I think it's going to be a big challenge for everybody. Yeah. So we replace so the obvious, that with yeah, and the obvious choice is to use finger biometrics as a means of authentication. You don't have to remember your passwords, uh, and it's unique and uh, they, and uh, it's uh, it's very secure. I mean, it has yeah. to be your finger, right? Yeah. I mean, passwords and pins you can somebody can steal it away from yeah, you. Yeah, it yeah. are written well, somewhere. Well, people end up leaving them in yeah. files called password on their yeah. computer and stuff because they right. can't remember them all. That's the yes. challenge. And it's that thing of a trusted device. Your own device is yes. a trusted device, so you can yes. you can have that. Mm -hmm. Fascinating stuff. Well, Peter, good luck with your presentation right. this afternoon. Thanks okay. for stopping by to chat. All right. And Thank I hope you. we can talk again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.